Well, hello and welcome to the Soul Nurture channel. This is Victoria and I'm so excited to have you here with us today. I have a special, special guest I'm going to introduce in just a moment. Um, and if you've landed on this channel, trust that you're here for a reason. So I just invite you to stick around for a little bit and listen for a little bit and see if this resonates with your soul. That's the intention of the Soul Nurture channel, a, a sort of a sacred space to gather uh, via the internet, via YouTube, to connect with like-hearted and soul-minded people and be reminded you're not alone in this journey of unfolding and reclaiming our soul potential and nurturing that. So that's the intention of this channel. And so I talk about subjects that help us reclaim soul potential and expand that soul potential. And astrology is one of those topics. So today I'm so honored and delighted to have uh, my astrology mentor and soul friend, um, Stephanie Austin. And, you know, I, I think timing, the synchronicity is so perfect here. I, I think I've asked her to come on in the past or I thought about it. And this year feels right for this to invite her in. Stephanie, I want to talk about how I met her. And then I'm going to talk about her bio a little bit. And then I'm going to invite her in and share whatever she wants to share. But you know that saying, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. That is how I found Stephanie or how the universe put us together. And I am mostly a self-taught, um, self-taught, been studying astrology since I was a kid, but I just could never find that person that really super resonated with me and that I trusted and trust was a key. And Stephanie has such a nurturing um, energy about her that I felt right at home. But what had happened for me was it was, I don't remember the date, but it was just when it was on my radar to go deeper in my studies and an email arrived from another mentor of mine saying, have you heard about Stephanie Austin? She lives in the next town next over from us. And I opened this email, read Stephanie's, I think it was a new moon or a full moon um, uh, report. And I was blown away by what I was reading. It deeply, deeply resonated with me. So I reached out to her and she responded to me right away. And the rest is her story because we are still connecting and I'm still learning and growing from her. So I want to share a bit about her bio. Um, truly, I don't know if you know this, Stephanie, but I refer to you as um, an astrologer, a, a astrological encyclopedia. <laughs> 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 because every time I have a question, you have the answer. You feel to me like a historian, a, like just a sacred gatherer of this sacred art. So mm -hmm. Stephanie is an astrological counselor, teacher, and writer. She has a master's degree in consciousness studies, a bachelor's degree in psychology, and a background in holistic health and spiritual development. Stephanie was an adjunct professor at John F. Kennedy U University for 15 years and is the author of an amazing book. And we're going to talk about this, I hope, too. The author of Ego Astrology, Finding Our Way Home. And then this one I hadn't heard of, Stephanie, it cracks me up. And Life After Twinkies, <laughs> A Holistic Guide to Dietary Change. She wrote uh, the new and full moon column for the Mountain Astrologer magazine from 2002 to 2016 and continues to offer her new and full moon forecast via subscription as well as yearly forecasts. Wow. Um, and I'll tell you, welcome, first of all, Stephanie. I'm so grateful you said yes to being with me on this channel. Um, I'm just delighted to have you here. My pleasure and my honor to be with you. Yeah, what I, I think what I'm super excited about, I think I've like, like, like held on to our connection like this, you know, I'm a Scorpio, like I, I found this gem, <laughs> this gem of well of wisdom, but I feel like, you know, especially as with the new moon in Aquarius today and moving into this Pluto and Aquarius this year, people need to know about you. People need to know about your gifting as an astrologer and all of the wisdom that you hold. So that was my intention of inviting you on. And the idea here is today's the introduction to Stephanie. I'm going to ask a few questions and then we're going to do a once a month topic focused astrology talk with Stephanie, right? Mm -hmm. That sound right? Okay. Was there anything you wanted to add to what I shared about your bio or anything that in the intro? Well, I was really struck by your intro and what you're doing on this channel. Those two things of helping people to remember 
and that they're not alone yes. and the importance of nurturing our soul times are so challenging right now those two things are absolutely critical for our sanity and our survival absolutely so thank you for doing this oh my pleasure too it's you know it when we're called to something it, it's not just to serve others but to serve ourselves as well and this is how in 2020 when i started this this is how i navigated 2020 uh through to our current transformational times and we continue, don't we? So yeah. let me, I want to ask you a few questions to kind of just as an intro to your journey with astrology. And I think everybody has an interesting uh, story. Those who are deeply involved in learning and students, and we're always students, um, a story of how we found astrology or how it found us. So what age were you when you discovered astrology and, and or how it found you? Mm -hmm. I didn't stumble across it until 33. I mean, before that, I had read the Sunday sun sign columns like everyone does. And that's all I knew about astrology up to that point. And so I never thought much about it. And I actually uh, would bristle when someone would say, oh, you're, you know, you're a, 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 a Scorpio. So you are this, this and this. I thought it was a form of astro racism, I call it. So I, was, <laughs> I was actually kind of anti-astrology until I was in graduate school at JFK University. And one of my classmates was an astrologer. And I couldn't reconcile how this intelligent spiritual woman could have been into this medieval mush stuff, I thought, as, as I called it. So I asked her to do my chart. And I was blown away at how she could speak to my soul, how she said things about me that no one else had validated or recognized. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that session, I said, how did you do that? I want to know how to do that. How did you get that from that piece of paper? <laughs> and so wow. I picked up the books, and I have not put them down since. I It was um a catalytic life-changing experience to have that reading fortunately from a very good astrologer wow that is amazing to me it was 33 because honestly knowing you and the depth of your wisdom i would have thought you you know came out with someone reading astrology to you at birth <laughs> <laughs> no. it, it's so you embody your wisdom so deeply and so profoundly that that really I'm impressed by that. And by anyone out there who's thinking about picking up astrology at 33, that leads me to a follow-up question, which is how many astrology books do you think you've read <laughs> from 33 on? <laughs> oh my God. Um, probably several thousand, but also what I've learned a lot from um, besides the recordings, I, I would get tape recordings or mp3s of conferences whether i could go to them or not mm -hmm. and most of all the best way i learned astrology and that the way that i encourage my students to learn it is to experience the energies to watch the cycles to notice how you feel when the moon changes signs when the sun changes signs and to really tune in because we're all responding to these cycles with its energy we're all um um linked and, and and tuned into these energies, but we're not conscious of them. So once we start to track them, we go, oh, that's what these archetypal energies feel like. So that's the best way I think to learn astrology is to feel and experience it for yourself. Absolutely. And you've guided me with that and, and helped me because one of my um, hesitations, I mean, I learned about astrology when I was a kid, but I would put it down because it felt too, too hard to understand too too much depth and i was never going to understand it all you know with my capricorn rising i was never going to figure it all out so forget it mm -hmm. um but you helped me to trust my intuition and feeling into what it you know what the transits are doing and and trusting the correspondence between the human experience and the celestial movement and that has helped me so much and given me confidence as a budding astrologer um to to make peace with there's always more to learn um but trust the intuition of it so i'm curious off on a tangent a little bit but what do you remember your first book that you read um the inner sky by stephen forrest which I still recommend. I love Stephen Forrest's work. His evolutionary astrology spoke to me and my heart. I I love him too. And I probably found him through you and I have yet to read that, but I will tell you last yesterday, I was listening to some of your recordings and Stephanie has a series of recordings over many years of teaching. <clears throat> and I was listening to some, I was so captivated by so many. I'm like, I was deep in it. And I, that's all I want to do now is listen to your recordings, but you mentioned him a few times and, uh, and it, yeah, it just listening to the recordings each and every time I have, uh, I had some new ones yesterday, but I learned something new. And that's what I love about your teaching. You, it's just not like you paint this beautiful picture to invite, 
you know, your students into expanding however they connect to astrology, which is so such a gift, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm curious then, were you, when you at 33 were interested about astrology, was it to understand yourself? Was it to understand others? And what way was it, What in what way did the door open for you to astrology? Initially, it was to understand myself. I had been looking for something all my life. Uh, when I was a little girl, I would look up at the stars and mm-hmm. and had this sense of longing, like you know, that scene in E.T. where he goes, where he says, E.T. wants to go home. I cried at that scene. I felt like I belonged out there, not down here. Mm-hmm. I always felt like a stranger in a strange land on this planet. I didn't understand why people were so crazy, why they cared about what color of skin someone had, wow. why they were fighting so much, why they couldn't see what I was seeing. I actually felt like I was something wrong with me until I began studying astrology and then realized, no, I'm just feeling energies that, again, everyone is um, feeling but not conscious of, right? We, we're, we're so busy, we're so trained and focused on other things that we don't, we don't notice it. So it helped keep my sanity and it continues to help me to trust my intuition like you, um, to um it validates what i'm perceiving on other levels it gives me a language um for what i'm sensing um and that has been invaluable yes beautiful you know in your intro i was surprised to hear that you also had a little reaction to like what is this you know because for me too and i think you know for me the capricorn rising of having a very healthy cynic and like this doesn't feel like I can, how do I explain energy and how do I explain this? So I, I would put it back down. So it's interesting that you had a little bit of a, what is this? Uh-huh. So it leads me to the question, um, why do you think people fear astrology? What's the fear oh, about? Um, uh, I don't know if I could speak for other people, but one of my fears was that I would be boxed in. You know, mm. there are these 12 signs and what I'd been reading before I, I came across Stephen Forrest was that was locking me into a certain mindset and a very limited perception of myself. Mm. And a lot of it didn't fit um, for me. So I was afraid of being misinterpreted or even not even seen for who I was, that I was going to be categorized and, mm. and boxed in. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Again, I arrived similar because being told, you know, a, a Scorpio, oh, you're a Scorpio. And I didn't resonate with my sun sign. It wasn't until I looked at my natal chart that I understood it felt uh, limited in some ways, but also very expansive, expansive in other ways. Um, mm-hmm. So you didn't have any personal fears. And of course, we can't speak to those of others. But so maybe I'll ask this way, you know, for me being on a, I, I say I'm on a progressive Christian path. I, I honor wherever I'm guided. I that that's where I, I'm led, but I'm also led to many different faiths. But I'm also curious about why people have fear about certain faiths or beliefs. And with mm-hmm. astrology, there is sometimes still when I talk to people, you can feel mm-hmm. the visceral fear that arrives. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if it's like when we're talking about energies, if it's if it's the fear of the unknown or the whatever. And I just, I, that's why that's something I'm curious about and something I have a mission of trying to dissolve the fear about too. So mm-hmm. that's why I wanted to ask you that question. How about this question? Um, could, I, could I say a little more to that? Oh, yes, now that you yes, yes, just yes, reminded yes. me of the piece. I think one of the reasons people have fear would be going back to what they were told about astrology. It's been demonized by Christianity, mm-hmm. even though if you go back to the early, I mean, the Bible references astrology dozens of times, the Pleiades, you know, Ryan, and so on. It wasn't until 325 AD in the Council of Nicaea, where all those references, many of those references um, about astrology and reincarnation were taken out of the Bible, Mm -hmm. and a lot of the feminine references were taken out. So there's a lot of editing that happened in in the fourth century. And because astrology can be a very empowering tool, Mm -hmm. I think it was intentionally demonized so that people wouldn't have access to that knowledge ah yes so that's one one thing that the christian you know overlay on that and then um more recently in the 16th 17th century until um, that time period astrology and astronomy were one science they were not separate Uh, astrology came from observing the heavens from astronomical observations and it wasn't until the split and the 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 cartesian split between head and heart mind and body spirit and matter that the split between the physical and the spiritual widened and so astrology being a language of energy and of 
metaphysical realities was no longer um, fitting into that paradigm, into the the slanting toward only the physical is real, the mechanistic view of reality. Mm. So that's another um, paradigm that we're deeply indoctrinate, indoctrinated to this day. Our mm -hmm. scientific um, methodology is based on that. Um, many of our religions still adhere to that, even though we talk about spirit and matter in many ways. The predominant paradigm, you know, is still very left brain, linear, masculine, materialistic oriented, mm -hmm. and astrology doesn't fit into that box. Excellent. Yeah, you know, I, I don't think most people realize that astronomy and astrology were, you know, it was one and the same, right? And then this, yeah, so thank you for bringing that. And I just loved, I just saw your wisdom well open, like, here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> I just See, this is what you can pull from nowhere to... <laughs> these really important pieces it's really profoundly amazing to me um and and that is true learning the history and understanding the origin of why you know the we were curious that our ancient ancestors were curious and started to track the celestial mm -hmm. movements and see how it corresponded to me it's mm -hmm. an extension of you know again if, if you're a person of faith it's a an, it's an extension of creator it's an extension mm -hmm. of creation and I always say that, do you really think that creator would send us here without any instructions or any support? So that's, that's my take on it. Okay. Beautiful. How about, um, what is it that you, you most wish people, let's see, I had a question. I'm, I'm just going to look at it because I want to make sure, um, what do you wish people would understand about astrology? So this is like the other side of the coin of fear, like to move into the awareness perspective of it. Mm. Well, first of all, that it's not the sun sign column but that's of actually a very limited extremely limited and in, in a sense can be a very destructive way of looking at astrology that's much much more than that mm -hmm. um so the number one is that it's it's far more than what we read in the sunday paper the sun sign column um to think of it as a language of energy i think is really useful you know to think of it as the language of archetypal themes is also very useful mm -hmm. and to think of it as a tool and and like any tool a tool can be used constructively or, or can destroy. So it's it's something that I that I hold with a great deal of respect and responsibility. You know that this body of knowledge can and has been used for ill rather than in good. Mm -hmm. So to see astrology as as a tool, it's not in my experience a belief system. I don't believe in astrology. Mm. Um, it's like I don't believe in gravity either. It just is. Right? I don't believe in mathematics. I don't believe in science. Those are tools. Those are methodologies. There's nothing to believe about those things. There are approaches, yes. you know. Um, so I, I think if we hold it in that context, it makes a lot more sense and it and it strips away a lot of the fear. It's a tool, right? and it's and it's how we use it that um, determines how how useful or destructive it is. Yes, I love that. And I also, I, in working with you, I, what I love about you is I, I think a lot of people maybe fear astrology too, because there is a tendency for some astrologers to paint the picture of doom and gloom. Oh my goodness. And, mm -hmm. and I've sometimes have gotten into, I'll call you and or email you and say, gosh, I'm mm -hmm. looking at some transits. And you always remind me that this is evolution and that you always put the positive spin of, you know, like I like to say to my clients, why is this working for us? That it's all mm -hmm. working for us, right? So, um, so, so, what is it about? I mean, how can we utilize astrology that way to see it as support in our individual and collective uh, uh, evolving or unfolding? How, how can if we, we hold it well, keeping the big picture in mind, however that, however we do that, and whatever supports us in doing that. Um, for me, uh, getting outside, being in nature, is an immediate and extremely effective way of remembering that there's much more going on than what's being broadcast in the six o'clock news. Mm -hmm. um, I would say and recommend to people to turn down the volume on the external news, on the social media and mainstream news, and turn the volume up on our intuition and observations. We're, we're getting a lot of programming, a lot of um, conditioning from, you know, um, 
major media. And it's not, not always for our benefit. It's generally to sell, you know, sell something, you know, to direct, to make us vote a certain way. It's not um, intended to raise our consciousness. So we have to make a special effort to do that our, ourselves in whatever way speaks to us with nature, with meditation, qigong, chanting, art. There's, there's a, uh, there's a myriad of ways we can nurture our soul as you're as you're doing with this show. So um, number one way would be to say, yes, keep nurturing your soul and that will keep opening you up to seeing the big picture because mm -hmm. it's really easy to get locked in and into it. Fear is essentially a lack of information. Mm -hmm. It's like we're looking through a keyhole. I love the, the metaphor of you're looking through a keyhole and you see this big eyeball staring back at you. You go, oh my God, I'm not going to open that door. But if you... <laughs> do you might see a little kitten staring back at you oh. you know so fear narrows our perception when we're afraid we are literally dumber our consciousness drops out of our cortex out of our rational brain our reasoning brain and drops into our limbic system our reptilian brain which is much more instinctive and reactive mm -hmm. so when we're fe fearful we have we go into fear we go into fight flight fear or freeze right we literally narrow our, our vision and we have um, much less capacity to reason we literally get go out of our mind literally when we're in fear so whatever we can do to catch ourselves when we start feeling that take a deep breath slow and deepen our breathing that's always an immediate way to to shift our consciousness mm -hmm. um, that puts us out of that sympathetic response into our parasympathetic nervous system we have two nervous systems yes. and when we're in fight and flight we're in the sympathetic and we're in an adrenaline rush, we're in a contracted state of consciousness. When we relax, then we go into healing mode and into um, intuitive mode and receptive mode. So really important to, to track our energy and to notice when we get contracted, what, what puts us into fear and what helps us open up. Yes, beautiful. I love that word track. I like to say soul tracking. My husband mm -hmm. is an actual physical earth based tracker. I'll learn, mm -hmm. you know, that lineage of tracking from Tom Brown Jr. And and that with you and his work, I, I'm like, that's exactly what we're doing. We're just soul tracking. We're tracking human beings, having a soul, our souls, having a human experience and the soul helping navigate with whatever's around us, whether, you know, and I love the idea of um, expanding, not contracting. And so just to, again, expand on the topic of astrology, how could astrology help us expand instead of contract and evolve and grow? How do, how does one use it as a tool that way? Mm -hmm. Well, it reminds me that there are cycles, you know, we think of time as linear, past, present and future, but there's another kind of time mm -hmm. that is spoken to by the cycles of the planets. And so to know that this too shall pass, you know, to be able to be fully present with what is, but to know that there's also much more than that this is part of a larger whole, a larger cycle. So, for example, right now, if you were to look at the world just as it is, it looks pretty bad. I mean, on all levels, environmentally, politically, socially, economically. Um, but if we start studying history, looking at the cycles of the planets and seeing these correspondences, go, oh, we haven't been here exactly before, but there have been similar themes that are cycling around. And we can learn from what has happened in the past. It, you know, we can keep that in context so we don't go into that contractive state we go wait a minute again this is the bigger picture yes i love that um you know when i when i listen to you 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 i think you probably introduced me to richard tarnas it's probably how i found him but mm -hmm. be, and that's that depth of your your astrological wisdom that again, you paint this picture of just not in this present moment, but to evolve us to look at what were, what the cycles were in the past and what we could project into the future. And, and that is the greatest fear is the fear of the unknown. But if we have awareness of cycles and that we're in a cycle, then we know this cycle is going to shift and, and, you know, uh, on the other side of it, something new will emerge. And that is mm -hmm. what evolving and evolution is. And, and I think next time, oh, I do want to talk a little bit about 2023 astrology because I feel like we're right over it now. Um, if you could give us a top of the trees feeling of 2023, because I think evolution is definitely one of the key words, maybe some key words or a sense of where we are in the cycle. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, just to uh, let people know, Richard Charnas' book, uh, Cosmos and Psyche, is a wonderful resource. If people are interested in looking at cycles, he researched, um, he went back two or 3,000 years and noted the correspondences between major, major outer planet cycles and how that was part of an evolutionary trajectory. So he's a wonderful resource for that. Um, so 2023, that's a big topic. I, I recently did a two-hour recording and that's a nine-page handout on that wow. that's available on my website. So I can't really do it justice in a, in a few minutes. But, but what I do when I look at a yearly forecast is what outer planets are changing signs. Those are shifts in archetypal themes. And there are two big, actually three big uh, shifts this year. And it's interesting that the, the three planets that came together in 2020 Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto Mm -hmm. formulated a a historic conjunction in Capricorn, Mm -hmm. one that only occurs every 735 years. So no surprise, we had a huge global event in 2020. Mm -hmm. And all three of those planets this year are changing signs. Pluto is about to dip into Aquarius. It's going to go back and forth a little bit for the next couple of years, but it's dipping, going from Capricorn to Aquarius. Saturn has been in Aquarius, moving into Pisces, and Jupiter has already moved through Capricorn and Aquarius and is moving, and and Aries is now moving into Taurus. So those three planets, Jupiter, the principle of expansion, essentially, Saturn, the principle of focus and concentration, and Pluto, the principle of transformation, are shifting their lesson plan you could say i love that Mm -hmm. and so if you know a little bit about the planets and a little bit about the signs you can put those two together right those principles that the planets symbolize and the signs being the the themes the patterns the gestalts that are wanting to evolve Mm -hmm. so yes these plants have been in those signs before but each time it's a little different right every every year we have a spring but each spring, we're a little different. The world's a little different. It's not the same, but the same process unfolds. The days get longer and, and warmer and so on. The same themes appear, but what we do with those themes is going to be a unique response to that. Yeah. So astrology reminds us there is this evolutionary journey and the natural cycles of, of the plants and the seasons is a wonderful overlay for that principle of cycles. We all experience the cycles of the seasons, the cycle of the day, the month, the year, and so on. So it's a good reminder again to know that we're on this continuum and that what's happening right now is is only a, a, a fraction of that larger cycle. Yeah, yeah. So I know it's a big, big subject and I do want to... Uh, um, actually, can you say your website right now? And then I'll also put it in the details. What is sure, your it's eco astrology, the ECO, and then the word astrology.com. And I chose that it popped into my head many years ago. Um, I was studying eco psychology, mm-hmm. which is the, the power of nature to change consciousness, to help heal and, and open our hearts. Um, and then I thought, oh, eco astrology, just kind of, and, and the word eco means to originally the Greek word means home. Right to find our way home. So I like that association of yes. coming back, coming home via the stars, or coming back to the stars, or the star knowledge. So that's how eco astrology came into into being for me. I absolutely I love that, and I will definitely put your website uh, in the details. But you lead me to your book, which um, you, what's the title of your book again? Eco astrology. Eco astrology, finding our way home beautiful so i want to read just a like i had a little i took a little excerpt out i think the very beginning uh this book is so rich and so um truly uh, at least for me and i'm sure for many many others i encourage you you know i'm always saying my wish for you stephanie is you get this uh in print and on audio or audible because it's one of those things that when i read through it i just it's I can take in, it's so rich for me. I can take in a little bit at a time to hear it and to have it in my hands. Right now it's available uh, electronically, right? Uh, is that, okay. It's an ebook, yes. An ebook, there's the word, okay. Um, so I love this. So eco-astrology synthesizes wisdom from ancient myth and mysticism with insights from transpersonal um, psychology and the new physics. It provides It provides a roadmap for your spiritual path. It outlines potentials, not predictions. I think that's really key. I do think that's some fear there with people predicting. Um, it details, oh, I'm sorry. Did you want to say something there? That reminds me, of, I, I forgot to mention, I think one of the primary fears that I had and many people have about astrology is that sense of prediction that I'm locked in to, you know, that I don't have free will. 
Yes. And, and many people work with astrology, you know, some astrologies uh, like Joe Tisha Hindu astrology focus more on prediction mm -hmm. and they can be very skillful. But what I found was the more conscious someone is, the less predictable they are. Ah, I love the more, that. The more conditioned and programming, yes, we're going to continue to do what we've been taught to do. Mm -hmm. But the more we wake up, the more we heal, the more aware we are, the more choices we have and the less Absolutely. predictable our future. Right. Thank you for that. It's true. I like to say, that you, yeah, you're the, in the driver's seat. It's you, whenever I, and I try is to be careful to not say this is going to happen, but rather here are some possibilities. Mm -hmm. You interacting with the possibilities will make the choice. It's not, yes. like this is set in stone. Um, so thank you for pausing me there. I just want to read the rest of that beautiful. I think it's your opening, uh, 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 paragraph. Um, so it outlines potentials, not predictions. It details what you came to learn and what you came to share. This is another resonant piece for me when I met you, because even before I picked astrology back up, my whole soul mission was about reclaiming soul potential, um, visioning for what we're here to do, those soul calls. And your languaging just was like, yes, yes, this is exactly, this book really just feeds me. So, uh, and what you came to share, it validates what you already know in your heart and soul. Mm -hmm. Everything is connected. We are part of the cosmos, part of the sky and earth and seasons. Perhaps astrology's greatest gift is this reminder, just as we talked at the opening, that we are not alone not separate, not adrift in a meaningless universe. Mm -hmm. I mean, folks, that's her opening chapter. <laughs> I mean, really, right there. That, to me, that that it's such an invitation to something greater mm -hmm. individually to contribute to the something greater collectively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is there anything else you want to add in our intro to your work today? Anything hmm. you'd want people to know or what comes to mind? Ah. Hmm. Just that if someone is interested in, in working with astrology to get an astrology calendar if they can um, and start tracking the, the lunar cycles. Notice like today we had a new moon in Aquarius. The sun and moon are together in Aquarius. Just start to notice how do you feel when the moon is in Aquarius and in two days or so it moves into Pisces. Just kind of keep your antenna out. How do I feel when the moon is in Pisces? And then two, day, two, two and a half days later, it goes into Aries and so on. So within a month, you get a, a direct experience of the Zodiac. It's going to be subtle. And if we're busy 24 hours a day, we're not going to pick it up. But if we just start setting that intention and kind of holding it in the back of our mind, we'll notice these shifts. And that actually... Um, was one of the reasons I got into astrology was I was feeling these shifts and I would look around and go, I know something just changed, but I, I couldn't pinpoint anything physical to it. Like I would be sitting by a river, you know, and I would go, okay, something just changed, you know, and I would thought, well, I must be kind of crazy here. And then I would later when I learned astrology, I could go, back, oh, the moon just changed signs. I could feel the moon and we can all feel this. I'm not alone in this. You know, again, we're, we're all feeling it. We're not just aware of it. Mm -hmm. so, so I would say, um, play with it. See, see how it speaks to you and which kind of astrology speaks to you. There's different, there's many different kinds of astrology. You know, there's Chinese. Today is the, the beginning of the Chinese New Year. That's a whole system of itself. There's Vedic astrology. There's Tibetan astrology. There's Mayan astrology. I work with Western astrology because I feel I'm steeped in those archetypes. I'm, I was born in a Western culture culture and um, the evolutionary astrology stream of that really spoke to me so so for people to to look for what works for them you know there's no one size fits all yes excellent advice and all of these things that you're mentioning we may tease out a little bit more in other topics and other you know we're going to be meeting once mm -hmm. a month um i don't know what it's going to look like we're just trusting how this unfolds too but i know um i we invite you to put comment, put, you know, comment any questions you have. You can email Stephanie directly, or you can email me. All of this will be in the details, but it's going to be a continuing conversation about astrology. Um, for me, the goal is to share Stephanie's wisdom and to help people. Again, we fear what we don't know to understand mm -hmm. more about astrology. Um, and as, as a tool, as a sacred tool, as a transformational tool, as a supportive tool. And again, in 2020 is when I most, I got it out, you know, sort of out of the closet. I didn't tell a lot of people that I practice astrology. I had some fear uh, pushback on that. And yet it's been a guiding supportive source for me since I was a kid. And 
And it helped me understand 2020 and it helped me understand we're in this continuum of unfolding and evolving and to make peace with that. So, so here we are. So who knows what our next topic will be, but I'm grateful that you're with me on this journey. I do have just two, uh, two follow-up questions. And then I'm going to ask you the question I think I should have asked at the beginning because it's the soul nurture channel. But first I want to just ask, um, let me go back to my little questions. Um, how about this, since we are talking about this right now, um, what is your wish for our collective unfolding? Kind of a big question, but what is your mm. wish? Mm. Well, kind of my ongoing prayer is that um, all that people wake up to who they really are, that, that we are able to heal our hearts. Mm -hmm. I think essentially what's happening is humanity is moving into a paradigm of what you could call the heart. And from the heart of the fourth chakra, we can feel our interconnectedness, our unity, our equality, right? If you think of the chakras as a developmental cycle, first chakra is basically survival and our connection to the earth. The second begins our creative process, both physically and, and on other levels. The third is the beginning of our individuality, right? Um, who am I and my personal power? The fourth, you know, being the mediator between the first and the seventh chakras um, enables us to connect with others, right? It, 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 the world looks very different when we have an open heart than when we have a closed heart. When we're in fear, we're, you know, we're, we're contracted, we're, you know, withdrawing from, from life and from others. When we can open our hearts, it doesn't mean we don't um, have any, um, and by, by an open heart, I mean that we can witness what's going on, right? We don't judge uh, or we try not to judge. Um, and from that place, we can have compassion, empathy, intuition, and we know what's true. Mm -hmm. This is our inner truth meter. And these days, there's so much misinformation and censorship that it's really important to trust our heart, to trust what feels right. Mm -hmm. We're get very conditioned to be in our heads. We're you know, a very mental culture, especially in the United States. And most of Western cultures are very mental. Mm -hmm. And that's a wonderful source of information, but it's limited, right? Yeah. The heart can know far more. Um, 96% and this comes from, from physics, since 96% of our universe is invisible to our five senses. Mm -hmm. Only 4%, about 4.5%, is measurable by our most scientific, uh, most sophisticated scientific instrumentation. Mm -hmm. So the vast majority of our universe, we call it dark matter and dark energy. We don't really know what it is. We can only infer it from how it, uh, how it reacts. But we only know 4% of the universe with our mind and our five senses. How do we access the other 96%? our heart, our intuition. Wow. That, that's our gateway to the vast majority of information. So if people knew that, it would, I think would help them to trust themselves more and to develop that. You know, we, it, it's good to take a class if we need to. I, I took an intuition development class myself many years ago. It helped give me more tools and it helped most of all to validate what I was picking up. You know, I could sense things, but I couldn't always translate it. I couldn't always trust it because it didn't make sense. Right. Mm -hmm. So, know that we have access to divine intelligence right mm -hmm. at 24 7 our guides our our higher self is always we're, we're never separate from them for yeah. those aspects so to learn to lean into that rather than to fall back into the mass media and and just being limited in our in our mental beautiful state. yes two things and i think i'm going to wrap us up but this is i could talk to you forever but I'm struck by the 4%, 96% when we think about, you know, I'm a trans transformational hypnotherapist and we use the model of 5% in our conscious awareness and um, 95% in our oh, interesting. Isn't that that? Yes. Uh -huh. And you know, Jung yeah. speaks about that ratio and I can't remember specifically, mm -hmm. but I remember hearing it in one of my classes and thinking, mm -hmm. how did he know that without any mm -hmm. being any ability to sort of look at what's going on in the brain? So mm -hmm. That's really fascinating. There's some correlation. And and though, and that is, we are the microcosm of the macrocosm, these right. correlations. And trust yourself. I love that. And I, I would say trust the universe and trust the unfolding. Mm -hmm. We're all, it's all okay. We're, you know, and, and I, this is why I turn to someone like, to, like Stephanie and people come to me to that reminder, we're not alone. Yeah. There's a natural and organic and you know, beautiful cycle unfolding we happen to be in. 
and it's all okay, right? So, well, Stephanie, thank you so much for being with me. And for those of you who are watching, please um, ask any questions for Stephanie or comment. What were your takeaways from today? Please subscribe if you feel called, like, and um, share the channel if you feel called. Uh, where this channel is continually evolving just as I am, just as we are. Uh, so we'll, Stephanie, we'll be back next month in February. We haven't set a date yet, but um, let us know what you'd like us to talk about. Um, and I'll have Stephanie, our astrological encyclopedia, prepare some beautiful guidance for us for that, that time. So thank you all. Thank you, Stephanie. I love you. I appreciate you. And thank you for being with me today. My pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, I love to you too. Okay. Mm -hmm.